My guest today is Douglas Crawford. Douglas narrates his story about how one day an incident changed his life forever. I had no idea that this one moment was going to change the rest of my life. Mm. Because now, 31 years later, I'm still teaching exactly what I learned that day. Now, is that chosen on another level? I think so, before I came in. During our talk, Douglas will be elaborating on what actually happened on this special day. Douglas, um, we are sitting here in central Aarhus in Denmark, and uh, you're joining me for a talk in English. And Douglas, uh, just to introduce you uh, a bit, and uh, maybe you can introduce yourself uh, afterwards more thoroughly, then um, you're a master rebirther and a teacher of A Course in Miracles. That's correct, yeah. And you've been working with that for over 28 years. No, actually 31 years now. 31 <laughs> years now. Yeah. Wow. And you do workshops and individual uh, sessions, rebirthing sessions, That's as right. well as coaching sessions in uh, A Course of Miracles. That's correct. Right. So, and, and uh, if people are interested, After listening to this podcast, uh, more about you and your work, uh, you have masteringlife.dk, is that right? Correct. Yeah. And uh, could you start off by telling a bit about your professional background and how you came to work uh, as a teacher? Yes, it's a <laughs> quite an interesting story how I started all this because I was very non-spiritual 31 years ago, but I was going through, you could say, a, a dark period in my early 40s after having a successful business, and I, I let that go and felt quite lost, actually. And the only spiritual thing I was doing, although it wasn't really spiritual, it was more physical, uh, was yoga. I was going on yoga weekends. And there was a young lady there who said to me, Douglas, you need to get yourself rebirthed. Okay. Well, I didn't really know what it was about, but I knew it was something to do with the breath. And she said this to me on three separate occasions, and I didn't know what prompting really meant in those days. When we get, <laughs> I know we can get internal and external prompts, and this was a very clear <laughs> external prompt, but I've only got to see that afterwards. Anyway... I uh, went to an iridologist for some reason, I can't remember exactly why, but I was told that I had some gallstones and I needed to do a, a gallbladder flush. So I fasted for six days on grapefruits. Right. So I hadn't really eaten for six days and I went to a movie and the movie itself was... Um, with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Danny DeVito called The Twins. Right. And this was a film about these twins were separated from their mother at birth and were adopted. And then later on in life, they they started a search to find their mother. Now, right at the end of the movie, they finally found their mother and embraced her. And this moment, this reconnection with mother, touched me so deeply that I went into what I now call a spontaneous rebirth. I started uh, breathing very heavily. I started crying and I started sweating. In the cinema? In the cinema. And it was right at the end of the movie, so there was uh, people left. And I was actually breathing like this very deeply, very heavily, for about an hour. Crying my eyes out, you could say. And... When I left the cinema, I ran home and I phoned my mother and I said something like, I love you and you have made me so angry. And bless her, her, her arms literally came down the telephone line and held me and I cried for another hour. <laughs> and I felt so released and so relieved after these two hours of crying. I got this huge insight that I wanted to be a rebirther or At least I wanted to do more rebirthing. So I phoned this girl at the, from the yoga camps and I said, I want to be a rebirther or something like that. And she said, well, coincidentally, there's a, a rebirthing <laughs> training starting on Friday. <laughs> <laughs> 
So I started on this training, and I actually did nine years with this trainer called Binnie Dansby, a very, very fine teacher. And she worked with A Course in Miracles in her hand. Mm -hmm. So this is how I was introduced to A Course in Miracles. Um, and it, yeah, yeah. You have the book I'd, here? I have the book here. Would you like me to say a little bit about what the book is? Yeah, could you start by know? describing how it looks? Okay, it's... Uh, well, it has, there are different versions, but it's a blue book, and it has many, like over a thousand pages. <laughs> it's, it's a bit like a Bible. In right, a way. right. And it's translated into, I don't know, 26 or more countries, and it is in Danish, and it has gold print on it, a bit like a Bible. <laughs> but basically, it's a channeled work. It came through in the 60s to a lady called Helen Schuchman, who had got, a bit like I had got to in my life, like, there must be another way. Right. Nothing I'm doing or thinking or saying is really making me happy, bringing me peace. And she got, and she was a psychologist, a clinical, uh, yeah, a clinical psychologist. And she um, got to that, there must be another way. And suddenly she started hearing this voice coming through her. And it's actually the voice of Jesus, the, the, the spirit that we know from 2,000 years ago. And what he has, has told us is that his teachings 2,000 year, years ago was actually what is now in the Course of Miracles, but it was very misunderstood uh, 2,000 years ago. And the Bible, even though there are many truths in it, uh, there are also, also a lot of contradictions in it. And this book comes as a correction to the Bible, actually. And it's a very fine uh, mind training system to systematically unwind our mind to unwind, to release all the blocks that we have to love. And it says that our natural state actually is love. We don't have to learn how to be loving. We don't even have to learn um, how to love. We have to remove the blocks and our love just springs up like a fountain. So, so did you, how did you start, uh, how was your meeting with the teaching? I mean, how, did, how, how was your first... Uh, well, as, as I said, she, she, she uh, worked with the Course of Miracles in her hand. And I, even though I went on a, a rebirthing training to become a rebirther and to, to release many of my uh, emotional blocks, right? Um, she was working s side by side with the Course of Miracles. It's quite a, a heavy book to, to read. It's a bit like reading the Bible. And much of it is in iambic pentameter, which is the the Shakespearean style, which for some is very difficult to, to read. It's certain and particularly difficult for me. And it was an assignment to read this book. Oh, you had to time. read it during... Well, yeah. we, <laughs> like a, a good student, I, I went through it, but I didn't really get it. I wasn't reading it with enthusiasm. I was reading it because I thought I should. Right. <laughs> so I didn't really get it for a while until several years after I started a book came out called Disappearance of the Universe by Gary Renard. And it's been translated into Danish, and the Danish title is Gul Er, or God Is. And this book is a much easier uh, language to read, and it gives an overview of the course in quite a, a light, fun way. And it got me to open the door to A Course in Miracles myself. It's like a big aha. Uh -huh. uh, now I understand the message from the Course. Right, right. So I right. highly recommend people to actually read Gul Air or Disappearance of the Universe first. Right, right. And then, and then study the Course. And then The Course in Miracles is actually in, in three sections. The main, the first... Uh, Douglas, I was thinking, could sure. we get back to A Course of Miracles in a moment? Sure, of course. Because... Um, when I met you for the first time here in Aarhus, you, uh, it was at a session, a rebirthing session, where a group of people turned up and, and I didn't actually know what was going to happen, but I had a friend who told me uh, about it before that it's really a good experience, you should try it. So I, I went and um, um, it, breathing techniques are not that new to me, but it was, this technique was different because it was simple but still very powerful. So after uh, maybe one or two hours, I, my mind was so clear and I had this um, 
light weightedness uh, yeah and this joyous uh, feeling and uh, I remember I, I was really surprised and asked uh, what just happened here <laughs> and you replied very simply that um, well it's uh, there's there's some some relation between the breath and spirit and but you didn't go in depth it was like also difficult to but how, how was that similar your own experience w with the uh, rebirthing your first times yes well um for me it was very much a lot of tears right i cried a lot for actually quite some years on this rebirth of training but if you look at the word inspiration mm. um and you look at it more closely, it's in spirit, inspire. Right. In spirit. And if you look up the word inspire in the English dictionary, it says to breathe in. Does it? Yeah. And to expire, which is to die, is to breathe out. Oh. So we have known on for well, ever since language was created that breathing has connects us in some way to spirit and what it does really is even though it, it um, oxygenates the body you could say somehow our body is the primary block to spirit and particularly our brains it's almost like a, a door that we close down to spirit <laughs> and when we breathe we oxygenate the brain and maybe something happens on another level that I can't even put words to but something happens and it opens a doorway and we literally become inspired. <laughs> <laughs> if you wanted to get creative about a particular project, a very good way is to lie down and breathe and be inspired. Wow. So, yeah. so the technique can, use, <clears throat> it can be used uh, in different ways yeah. according to what you want to do with it. Yeah. And how do you teach in it yourself? I mean, how do I teach it? Yeah. Well, teaching the the method is very simple because, like you experience, you simply lie down and you breathe in a very specific way. And the way we there are different forms of rebirthing. Right. Some are more gentle than others. The way I was taught was very gentle but powerful. In fact, gentleness is the most powerful actually. And we breathe up into our heart chakra because we're opening our hearts literally. And we breathe fully, mm. and it's called connected breathing. There's no pause between the in-breath and the out-breath. So we're breathing a lot more air, oxygen, than we actually need. And as I said earlier, the oxygenation, particularly of the old brain... Well, <clears throat> perhaps I'll tell you a little bit about our early life, birth. When we're born, the old reptilian brain is fully formed the emotional and cognitive brain gets formed later. Particularly the cognitive brain is not fully formed until you're in your teens, actually. And so any experience that we have, particularly around birth, first few minutes or hours of life, and very early childhood, are laid down by this old reptilian brain. Mm. And this is why you can't Mm. talk your way into birth mm. trauma mm. it's not a cognitive experience it's a fight or flight experience if you've had a traumatic birth which many of us have in western society with a lot of medical intervention mm. the body gets shocked and this this shock is laid down by the the reptilian brain the beauty of rebirthing is that when you breathe and oxygenate the brain you oxygenate the whole brain mm. And f I don't truly understand the mechanism, but when you oxygenate it, somehow these old memories start to get released. And you can actually release layers of birth trauma in the very first session. It's very direct. Does that mean you get a picture or somehow remember the birth experience? Or how, how does that... Well, again, it's not, not a cognitive no, experience. No. It's not a, an emotional experience. Birth trauma isn't, you don't cry when you release birth trauma. It's a physical experience. 
Right. It can be tingling in the hands. It can sometimes be cramping of the hands. It can be energy moving through your body. Uh, it can be sweating. It can be all, all sorts of different sensations, but it's very physical. Mm, mm. And um, once you've gone through it, you feel a sense of relief that's, that's wonderful. <laughs> mm. But if you have blocks which are more, or traumas which are difficult to access, uh, it might take more time maybe even to get to the pleasant part. Is that right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's in and out in a way. Um, right. We build up our defense system, our memories of traumas and so on, a bit like an onion. So we peel these layers away like layers of an onion. One of the, the things that, the reason it takes so long to truly awaken is that these experiences become part of who we think we are. Mm. And this also then becomes our most cherished possession. We don't want to let go of our sense of self, even though it might not be a pleasant sense of self. We hang on to it for dear life. And this is why um, unwinding the mind and releasing our traumas can take time. So it's linked to the spiritual awakening, rebirthing. It's not only a, a psychological process, it's also a spiritual process. Well, when you release your blocks, the physical, emotional, mental blocks, right. we are opening the doorway to our true self, to our higher self, which is very spiritual, of course. <laughs> so, and, um, okay, so... So getting back to A Course in Miracles, I was uh, reading um, a few years back, maybe 10 years ago, um, a, a Return to Love by Marianne Wilson, uh, Williamson yeah. in Danish Kærlighedens Mirakel. And I remember uh, reading it in um, Summer Cottage in Denmark and uh, I had some very beautiful insights and uh, really sensations of experiences of love coming through reading the book. And but I didn't. Uh, but same time, I was a bit put off by this, you know, the Christian Christian terms or terminology. And is that? But somehow, a sense it's not really a Christian teaching in the, yeah, in the fa old-fashioned ways. Could you describe uh, how how is it Christian? Is it not? Or how? Well, the, the Course of Miracles is definitely not religious. <laughs> And it's not uh, Christian in, in the sense of what the Bible is teaching. The reason that it uses Christian terminology is that this particular uh, form of Jesus' teaching has come through to the Western uh, civilization, to people who live in the West. Right, okay. Who, who know the terms of Christianity. Oh, right, I understand. So and to make it, you mean... To make it more understandable. Exactly. Okay. To me, it sounds uh, when listening also about it and listening you talk about it, it reminds me a bit of Eastern spiritual traditions or religious traditions. It's closer. Is it? Yeah. Yeah. Because it's also a process about uh, refinding your identity yeah. as a spiritual being rather than a, yeah. a separate ego. Is that right? Yeah. One of your uh, videos on your website, YouTube videos about the therapy patient relationship, because you can use the course of miracles, I guess, in different ways. Is that right? That's right. Yeah. So, so, and and you mentioned in the YouTube video, you mentioned like the therapist's role in the, and here the, the therapist patient uh, or client relationship is, I guess, in a broad sense, you can, you can use it in different ways but that that there's a process the therapist being a psychologist or a doctor or whoever has to heal himself before uh, being able to help others could you talk about a bit about that part of the well i can relate it to perhaps being a rebirther as i said earlier i can teach you the form of rebirthing in about five minutes you know how to do the breath and what to do with people when they react in a certain way but the real help that you give is your presence mm. right and 
the more inner work that you've done, the more layers that you have released of this onion, the more still you become, the more safe you are with whatever shows up in the client or the patient, whatever you want to call it. And it's this presence that really is the greatest help mm. because it provides a safety. See, in truth, we cannot change someone else's mind. It's impossible. Only the client themselves can change their own mind. I can, as a therapist, can um, teach only by demonstration. Right. In fact, The Course in Miracles says to teach is to demonstrate. And I'm demonstrating all the time one of two voices, either the voice of the ego or the voice of spirit. And from that, the, client, the, the patient can learn, the client can learn, if they so choose. It's totally up to the, to the, to the client. So the client or patient kind of uh, mirrors you and your energy, is that right? You could say that, yeah. Okay. But, but does that mean that... Uh, <laughs> that you just show up with the intention or energy and actually it's not important what you do? The content is, is what's important. Right. The content behind what you do. If the content is love, acceptance, peace, gentleness, hmm. that's what they take away with them. There is, no, there is no set way of relating to a client. It's like... The, the best way is to come totally empty, totally still, and then you'll know what to say or do with the client based on what they say and what they're demonstrating. Mm. So what you, so you don't have a plan in your sessions? With... I try not to. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, the Cause of Miracles says um, the plan is a, is a defense, mm. which actually blocks the truth. So I'm practicing more and more to to do all my workshops and courses with less and less planning. But so I can be wholly present with what's going on right now. Thank you, Douglas, oh. for <laughs> joining me on this talk. Oh, it's been it's been uh, great. Thank you, Suresh, and welcome. thank you for your great questions. Yeah, it uh, was revealing. <laughs> oh, good. <laughs> For me too. <laughs> <laughs> well, 